Hello everyone and welcome to Nursing to the and to do, your one-stop shop for health literacy. Today I'm here to share with you one of the conditions that really keeps me awake at night. It's Munchausen by proxy or factitious disorder by proxy. It's a mental health condition that affects a parent and the way it's manifested is that the parent afflicts pain or diagnose the kid with any kind of disorder so she could seek medical attention. This is to fulfill the parent's or the guardian's selfish desire for attention. It could be making lies or faking illness on the child so that um, the healthcare professionals could shower the mother with praises or give her the attention that she, she, she needs or she's looking for. So in situations like that, the mother could go to the extent of breaking the child's limb, you know, feeding, putting even feces in the child's blood, inserting like a syringe into the child's vein, injecting something. It could be a father too, but there was an HBO series about mother dead and dearest where um, DD is, was supposed to be the mother of Gypsy Rose. What happened was, Didi was, the, I didn't see a father figure, but Didi was Gypsy Rose's mother. And Didi portrayed or presented Gypsy Rose as a very sick child, where Didi took Gypsy Rose to several hospitals, to several doctors, all because she was seeking attention. She inflicted pain on this kid, and, but while they were at the hospital and around health professionals, she acted perfectly as if she was a perfect mother and enjoyed the attention the healthcare professionals were giving her. All at the expense of this kid's life. It, it's very upsetting, but it's a mental health condition. If it had not come out, this kid could have died easily. Because according to Gypsy Rose's encounter, she even had a peg tube. She had a tube feeding. She could eat through her mouth all right. But this mother presented her, you know, as if she couldn't eat, she couldn't tolerate anything. The mother even diagnosed her with cancer, asthma, and all those were false. There were several diagnoses that the mother had taken her to the hospital claiming that she had, you know, but she didn't have any of them. And that was sad in the sense that the child was vulnerable and couldn't advocate for herself in that regard. There was no other parental figure to see what the mother was doing. And it was all for the mother's DD's gratification. Her attention seeking behavior was supposed to fulfill her, make her feel good about herself. Inflicting pain on a child so that you could feel good. That is more than sickening. And it's a mental health condition. So I think even if she was alive, she probably could have pleaded um, insanity and maybe, I don't know, I don't know, but Gypsy Rose's boyfriend killed her because Gypsy Rose had shared with the boyfriend that that was what the mother was doing. She, as she grew, she could tell that there was nothing wrong with her. She could walk, but then Didi would ask her not to walk. So they go to the hospital, she would be confined to a wheelchair and you know, whatever the mother said was what she did. And it bothers me because this could be going on somewhere in this world and not recognized because it's not something that we talk about every day. It doesn't come up. According to research, 9% of kids die annually by this means, where the mother or the father or the parental figure for the attention-seeking behavior takes the kid to different places and the kid, you know, go through several procedures because of the mother's quest for a solution for the kid. When in actual fact, you know, in actuality, there's nothing wrong with the kid. There is no cancer. There is no feeding problem. There is no uh, mobility, like walking problem. There is nothing. It's just for the mother to get the attention that she wants. And I know some parents do that, especially in a home where the father is not present or the mother is not pre present. One parent can feign sickness and say, oh, your child is this just to get the other parent's attention. It's another form of it though, not at all. And but, to think that 9% of children, so if you take, let's say you take 100 kids, right, that die in a year, nine of them are from this, from this um, reason 
or for, for this course, if I'm doing the math correctly, 9% of kids die through this course. It's very sad. It's sad. It keeps me awake at night. And this was a situation that happened in Missouri, here in the United States. The Gypsy Rose and then the D.D. Blanchard's or Blanchard's um, situation. HBO played a documentary about it. And I think on Hulu, there is also this series called The Act, kind of uh, portraying the same thing. Hopefully, people hear it, get the message. And then when you see a mother and a kid at the hospital, you don't take anything for granted because it, there could be a situation near you where this is happening but for the, your lack of awareness you may think the mother is all such a good mother because in actuality as a mother presents like um, the best mother on earth in front of spectators like in the hospital setting at home the mother actually inflicts pain on the kid so the kid could go back in so they don't care people like that don't care cutting your limb you know injecting the child with um a worm something into their bloodstream poisoning the child so they could take them back to the hospital to justify their claim it's so senseless but it does happen and nine percent of kids die every year from this so keep an eye out it's very very important that we pay attention to our environment and monitor and watch these things and there's not much data on it because you know, they, it hasn't been something that has been researched in detail, but it does happen. It does happen. So don't be naive thinking that every mother and child looking at their uh, chemistry reaction, it's all good and and glamorous, but no, it could, there could be some underlying issue. Some children are suffering. It's a very dangerous form of abuse, actually. Very dangerous form of abuse, but hidden up behind medical reasons and abusing the kid for your own selfish gain in time so here are a few things to watch out for so in a short amount of time in a short span of time let's say six months the mother would be bringing the child to the hospital severally there could be about 100 uh hospital encounters in that short span of time right and the child diagnosis could be changing from let's say five to about 102 today she comes with oh she has um you know she's been um throwing up a lot tomorrow the mother may say oh she's been um you know she can't eat or she can't walk so different diagnosis changes over time based on the mother's report because one of the things that healthcare providers do is when you come they take their history you know the hmp and uh, chief complaint they ask why you are there and stuff like that and those are the things the mother will be saying so that will lead the diagnosis right and then they probably will explore let's send this kid here to explore why this is happening so some people even go to the extent of operating the kid to see if they can see something in there when diagnostics don't show anything and the child undergoes such you know unconducive such risk and unconditional con conditions or such risk all so that the mother will feel gratified and get the attention she wants and healthcare professionals may not know that that's going on so if a child you know comes in into your clinic your facility diagnosis keep changing every time the mother brings a kid the child doesn't get better things keep you know worsening and the mother is too comfortable with the hospital environment you know that that could be a sign she's happily talking to other mothers nurses providers meanwhile you know she she behaves like she needs that attention and they're feeding her and when no one pays attention to her she gets upset escalates quickly hey what you know things like that that's something to watch out for that's something to watch out for so don't be naive and the mother may lie about the condition you know and inconsistencies in their report whatever they say is so inconsistent that's something to watch out for for so let's pay attention to this thing and save kids you know who may be under such you know an unconducive influence who may be suffering because nine percent is significant to me if we can save even one kid every year we'll be saving lives thank you for listening and i hope you share this video so other parents other fathers other um, clinicians become aware of this condition thank you